God, a great big wonderful God, great big wonderful God, a God who's always victorious, always watching over us, great big wonderful God, we've got a great big wonderful God, a great big wonderful God, a God who loves every one of us, done so much for all of us, great big wonderful God. He'll never, never, never leave us He's always standing by To pick us up when stumble We're the apple of His eye He's got a great big wonderful God A great big wonderful God Oh, what a glory it is to sing Praise to a coming King Great big wonderful God he never, never, never leaves us He's always standing by To pick us up if we stumble We're the apple of His eye We've got a great, big, wonderful God Great, big, wonderful God Oh, what a glory it is to sing Praises to our coming King Great, big, wonderful God a great big wonderful God. Amen. Shout hallelujah wherever you are. Oh, you can be down in the dumps right now, but remember if you look up, we've got a great big wonderful God. And he's watching yes. you. You're the apple of his eye that means the most precious part of the eye is the apple of the eye they say and you're it let's just praise the lord let's invite his presence here we thank you lord for being our father we thank you lord for coming and living among us jesus i thank you you set a great example for us to live our lives victoriously. And it is you who give us the hope and the power and the strength to be a representative of yours on this earth, not just for ourselves, but to shine the light for others. So help us to get to know you better tonight, Lord. Just sanctify us, empty us of ourselves and all the business that entered our spirits today, calm us. And Lord, for those who are here and those who are viewing, I pray that they will make their place a holy place as we enter this holy season of looking forward for the purpose of your coming. And we give you thanks for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, as usual, I have a few announcements, and uh, this is Bible School Week, and we want everybody to be involved in ministries here, and this time, we've got a peacock from North Carolina to come and teach us. Well, that's his last name. His first name is Cuddy, and we've had him before, and he and his wife are here, so I want you to come. Even if you feel like you're not interested, if you've got a child or you've got a grandchild or a Hanai child or children in the neighborhood need Jesus you learn how to reach them and love them and teach them things about Jesus well come this is the best investment you can make this week by spending time with anointed teachers that come to teach us so it's Thursday Friday Friday night six thirty begins at 6 30 and then on Saturday it begins at nine o'clock till about 2 o'clock, 12 hours of lecturing, and you can get a degree after two years. So persevere and start working toward that goal. So we invite all of you. But it does not cancel out our Friday night family activities here at the church. I know those of you in Facebook, you have your own activities where you are. But we're going to have our family activities here. We're going to have a potluck at 6 o'clock with our youth and, and everybody else that comes. And we're going to have like an icebreaker game again after dinner. Then the guys are going to go out and play basketball. And us women will not interfere because I think some of our women 
embarrassed the men when they were called on to substitute for, for the men's team against the youth. So I'm gonna take all the women together and we're gonna have a wonderful time. If you've never played Wii, I'm gonna to try to revive that because I had a wonderful time developing tournaments with that. So we're gonna to go to my house and do something like that. But it's the time for us to bond together and fellowship and have fun. We're tired of this COVID and all of the isolation we've experienced. So we're getting together as a family to bond. Well, as you know, today is the beginning of Lent. The Catholics uh, go to church and they have some ashes put on their forehead. If you've seen somebody like that, that's what they went to to officially start the Lenten season, which looks forward to Easter. 40 days minus the Sundays will lead us to the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. So I hope you had your fat malasadas yesterday and you're now becoming holy and it's really a somber time. I want to begin with prayer for Ukraine. We gathered together for prayer this noon and we're going to start it through the Lenten season Monday through Friday, if you can take off from your job and come here, we're going to pray for Ukraine. It's such a shame that there is no world leader or group of nations that can come together to stop what this dictator is doing. There's nobody. But I'm going to read you a portion of scripture in my message tonight that we must not be discouraged. Why? Alan, can you tell us why? We just sang about it. We've got a great, big, wonderful God. So don't let the problems overwhelm us. Let the presence of God, the strength, the majesty, the power of God overwhelm us as we look to victory. But we want you to come, as we said, Monday through Friday at noon for about an hour, or you can leave whenever you want to. But we have brothers and sisters in our faith that are escaping even now. They're trying to get out of the country. The 14 airports were bombed, so they cannot fly out. So they're trying to catch whatever train they can or bus they can if they don't have cars. And some of our friends have contacts there. And these people are on the run. And many of them are children trying to get to the nearest border so that they can go to safety. But I know God is there with them, so let's begin with prayer for them. We also, it's a healing night too, and we'd like to pray for Lori. She went through her fifth round of chemo, and she's having a very bad reaction to it, uh, and she's gonna persevere, because at the same time, while she was having those bad symptoms, the doctor said, that since they discovered that cancer in her, her cancer has diminished dramatically, and it's because of prayer. So we give God glory for that, and Gary is also continuing his treatment, I believe, and uh, we want to pray for Ronnie, who uh, lost her son while she went up to Las Vegas for a wedding, and they're making arrangements to come back. So for some people, it's been a sorrowful time, and we want to reach out to them. Father, we want to know that our brothers and sisters in Ukraine are safe. And you are their father. They've been strong and courageous. We're praying for miracles of deliverance. We're praying for miracles for you to work in the heart of Putin. You said the heart of the kings are in the palm of your hands and you can turn it wherever you want to. We pray that the fear of God will come on that dictator, that you will, like you did in Nebuchadnezzar's life and the other kings there in Babylon, you will show up 
and fear will come and they will acknowledge that you are the almighty God. You wrote these things, Lord, so that we will remember that you can do these things when things are seemingly impossible. When you intervene, as we call upon you, you can do great and mighty things. So protect our dear loved ones there. Provide for them food miraculously. Provide for them safety miraculously. Provide a way of escape miraculously, Lord. We live by kingdom principles, and it's not by might nor by power, but by your spirit that things are accomplished, and we're standing in faith for them. So just bless those, Lord, with their problems and needs and their uncertainties. Overwhelm us with your presence tonight as we sing and glorify you. In Jesus' name, we give all praise. Amen. Amen. I know he rescued my soul. His blood has covered my sin. I believe. I believe. My shame is taken away. My pain is healed in his name, my believer, oh, my Lord has conquered the grave, my Redeemer lives, my Redeemer lives, my Redeemer lives, my Redeemer lives. I know he rescued my soul. His blood has covered my sin. I believe, I believe. My shame is taken away. My pain is healed in His name. I believe, I believe. I'll raise the banner. My Lord has conquered the grave, my Redeemer lives, 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 my Redeemer lives. To see your kingdom come, my Redeemer lives, 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 Lord, my strength. Is in you, Lord, my hope is in you, Lord, in you, is in you, my life is in you, Lord, my strength is in you, Lord, my hope is in you, Lord, in you, is in you. I will praise you with all of my life. I will praise you with all of my strength, with all of my life, with all of my strength. All of my hope is in you. My life is in you, Lord. My strength is in you, Lord. My hope is in is in you. Lord, my hope is in you, Lord, in you, is in you. I will praise you. I'll praise you with all of my life. I'll praise you with all of my strength. With all of my life, with all of my strength, all of my hope is in you. Strength is in you, Lord, in you, Lord, my strength 
If we did not have Jesus, we would have no hope for tomorrow. And all of us, we need hope in some area of our lives, right? Whatever your needs are, Jesus is the light at the end of your tunnel. And we praise God for you. I'd like for you to turn with me tonight. First of all, I've got two sections. It is lent to the meaning of the heart of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We can preach fancy sermons and we can look for, you know, it's a second chance in life. And he demonstrates it by the sacrifice he made. And so hopefully by the end of this sermon or lesson, we will finish with Isaiah 53. So you can be looking at that. But I'd like for us to turn to 2 Kings chapter 6 tonight. And then I have an announcement. I told you as a church family, I would like for you to read through the Gospel of St. John because it details the last week or so of Jesus' life. It's not like the other three Gospels. Those are called the synoptic Gospels because they have similar quotations from Jesus and similar miracles and so forth. John tells the new believers was God. And then he tells about the life of Jesus, and it culminates in that holy week. And so I'd like for you, we said we'd like for you to do that. But I got a message from the people at Through the Bible. They've been so good to us. And uh, we have been corresponding, and they alerted me that they have a special app for this Lenten season. It's the same app, actually, but a special program. So on the screen, I think we have the QR for the Bible is app, and you can take a picture of it and then download it. I'm not into technical things, so I'm not sure how it works, but you know. If not, you can just type in at the app store, Bible, capital B-I-B-L-E, dot is, I-S, dot com. And then under that, in that app, you'll find all the languages, most of the languages in the world, including the indigenous languages, and in audio form, and people from anywhere in the world can just poke their finger and get the Bible read in their own language. Many places people cannot read or write yet. And so this organization has done a marvelous work cooperating with other organizations with the same passion of getting the word of God out. But they would like for us to join the rest of the world in going through the Lent season by looking at the program, and they've named it One, O-N-E. So you go to Bible Is. And then you look at the programs, and the one that spells O-N-E is the one you will download beginning from today, reading from the New Testament passages, especially leading to the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. So if you would like to rather do that, instead of just reading the Gospel of John, I'd like for you to do that. I'll be doing that because it goes through all of the Gospels, selecting the passages that lead up to the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. But before we go to the situation in the Ukraine, the Ukraine was part of the old USSR, Union of Soviet Socialist Republic. They were under communism. For about 40 years now, they have been free and living in freedom like you and I, and they've been trying to develop as a country. And they're very devout people, and there are many ministries that have ministered to the people in the Ukraine. So there are many of our brothers and sisters there. And as I was praying this morning, the Lord says, I'm coming soon, and I want your family here to have a global picture of my family. That as my children in various places are suffering, I don't want you to forget them. 
And because there's no nation standing up against this tyrant, he's just going everywhere, attacking this country from all different sides, and he'd like to take it over. And not only that, they're saying he would like to restore the old Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. So we need to pray. But you know when you listen to the news and we have a divided country, we have a confused country because you listen to this network and they'll say this about something and you look at another network and they'll say something else opposite of what, you know, of the same incident. But let me say this, as Jesus coming gets closer and closer, there are two things that we need to be really grounded in, and that is the word of God. And it is being filled with the Holy Spirit. Visions, and it was not a vision, but it was so large in my spirit. And I could see in my spirit a tremendous storm. Have you ever been in a windstorm? I know in Okinawa, we used to have typhoons come at least once a year, and some terrible typhoons. I was in a typhoon once in the Philippines, and the Filipinos are so used to, unless it's a major typhoon, in the middle of the typhoon. They didn't tell us that. And then I saw some roofs flying off. And I said, what is going on? And said, oh, it's just a typhoon. I said, just a typhoon. Look, I'm not kidding. Roofs are flying off. I said, you know what? I think we better stop at Pastor Tenido's um, church and find shelter for a little bit, which we did. But if you've never been in a windstorm, you don't know how terrifying it is. So I've been through a few, but I was not exposed and being outdoors, of course. I always had shelter. But in my spirit, I saw the wind through our land. And, you know, and I saw a few bare trees without any leaves on. And the Lord spoke to my heart. Unless your roots are deep, you're not going to make it. So tonight, Jesus is coming very soon. We, we know that. I was listening to a preacher this afternoon, and he said, you know, we are the chosen generation. It was Rabbi Jonathan Kahn, I believe, that said, we are the generation that people had wanted to be when the coming of Jesus is, but we do know that there are prophecies that tell us there's going to be turbulence, and God is calling on us to get grounded and rooted, and when the winds come, we are going to be beacons of hope to people who've been stripped of everything and are full as we want to reconnect and, and be tight with each other. So that when the winds come, we will stand strong as a church family here. But I felt like I needed to encourage you by reading from 2 Kings chapter 6, verses 11 to 19. Because, you see, in one of the new, early news attack, he said, I will not leave my city. I will stand and defend my city. And then I found out that he was of Jewish descent. And hope leaped up in my covenant. All the promises you made to Abraham is, out, is his. And you will show up to help him. If he humbles himself to you, you'll be the same to him as you were to these in the Old Testament under your covenant. And so that's what I pray. So I want you to join me in praying for him like that. He's the mayor of Kiev. And then I remembered this incident from 2 Kings chapter 6. And there was a king of Syria. You know, Syria has always been kind of a irritant to Israel. And in this 11th verse, it says, Therefore the king of Syria was greatly troubled by this thing, and he called his servants and said to them, it seemed like every time the king wanted to do something, it seemed like somebody was letting out his plans. And he was very frustrated. He said, will you not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? That means, which of you is the traitor here? 
And one of the servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elisha. Do you want to be but Bridget, but Alan, Israel? Do you want to be a troublemaker for the devil? You're a troublemaker for Jesus for a long time, right, Alan? <laughs> Every place we go, it seems like Alan said, you know, I should hang out over there. Amen. But it says, but Elisha the prophet who is in Israel tells the king of Israel the words that you speak in your bedroom. What I've preached on, what we've heard from, you know, other people that God wants us to walk in that supernatural anointing. That's why I had, had you read the Gospel of Matthew at the beginning of the year, because we're of a new kingdom. We're not, you know, equipped with weapons of war like in the flesh, but we have spiritual weapons that are greater than the physical weapons that the world has. And so it says here, and so he said, go in for... The king sent horses and chariots and a great army there, and they came by night, and they surrounded the city. And when the servant of the man of God arose early and went out there, there was an army surrounding the city with horses and chariots. And his servant said to him, Alas, my master, what shall we do? I think people there in Ukraine are saying that. Sheep under some godly shepherds are running to their shepherds and saying, what shall we do in their distress? And I hear of heroic stories of priests and pastors going to stay in the Ukraine to take care of anybody who could not escape and who will be staying back. I believe that is the role of the shepherd, of God, that we can say what this prophet said because God has called us to be prophets and kings. Yes, you and me. That's what the difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament is. We are now equipped with the power of the Holy Spirit. And if we're for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. I heard on one of the newscasts that we have stockpiles of ammunition and weapons and tanks and planes stored up in the desert somewhere in the United States because we are not at war and we've withdrawn from They will not be so unequipped and defenseless, but we didn't. We need to pray for our nation. And so when you hear the news and hear the thousands of Russian soldiers and you see the tanks lined up and going down the highway, as they said, they bombed the airports almost the first thing because they did not want them to be able to escape. And you see lines of tanks rolling down toward Kiev especially, but other cities too, because it was a multi-pronged attack. I think we feel like that, you know. What are these among so many? We are so defenseless. They're coming. But he was not looking, the prophet was not looking at the circumstances of the world. He served a great, big, wonderful God. Maybe he invented the song, James. A great bit. He said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, the servant, and he saw. You know, I appreciate my eyesight now. I didn't know my eyes were that bad until I got this cataract operation. Now I can see how dirty my house was. I thought it was pretty clean until I came back home and took the bandages off and look, oh, I didn't know I had a nick up there and a, something over there and whatever. So many of you have eyes, but you cannot see. I had eyes, but I could not see, you know? But that's, we don't walk by sight. The world says seeing is believing, you know, when you say something, 
prove it like. You prove it to me. Seeing is believing. If I see it, then I'll believe. If you, you know, I, I pray for people and I bring testimonies home about people being raised from the dead or nearly from the dead, like they were, you know, like Ross was raised three times. And they say, oh, maybe he wasn't dead. He was just in a deep coma. Let me tell you what, if people don't want to believe, they're not going to believe, so I don't argue. But when we only see with our physical eyes, we will see the physical things, and that's all. And the servant was looking with his physical eyes, and what he saw what he, was what he could see, like I can see the dust in my house now. He could see with his physical eyes that fear is because you're seeing the wrong thing. You're seeing with your natural eyes. And of course, we have to learn to see with our spiritual eyes. Only the Holy Spirit can uncover the veil over our eyes and make us see by faith what is in store for us. This is why the cross is so important. And when the young man saw what the prophet was seeing with spiritual eyes, he says, behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. Have you ever fe felt lonely? You know, when I go to the hospital and pray for people in a lot of pain, I can put my hand on their hand and say, I know how you feel. But I'm sure in their hearts uh, they're saying, Pastor, you really don't know what I'm going through. You don't know this pain. Shingles, listen, I got my shingle shot recently when I went, finally went to the doctor. They want to give me all kinds of shots. I said, give it to me. <laughs> so I got my shingle shot, but I saw my mother suffer from shingles for a long period of time. And one day I looked at her and I said, Mom, I wish I could take half the pain from you. I didn't offer all, you know, <laughs> just half. And she looked at me and she says, Barbara, you don't want even half. And so I just stayed there and held her hands and cried and prayed. And I knew she was thinking, you say you know my pain, but you don't really know my pain. Because you see, it's a lonely experience. And I perceive in my spirit somebody out there is going through a lonely experience. You say, oh, yeah, but let's pray for the Ukraine and they're running and they're whatever, but I've got a hurt. I feel abandoned. I feel forsaken. I feel lonely. Nobody can know my pain. Nobody can know my pain. I'm going to pray for you tonight as we look later to Isaiah 53 that Jesus is the only one that really knows your pain, your physical pain, your spiritual pain, because he took your pain upon himself. And we have a choice to keep our pain or give it to him. But let's get back to this incident. There are chariots of fire all around Elisha. There's a wall of fire of protection around you, even if you cannot see it. If you are a child of God, the Bible says the angel of the Lord encamps those around those who love him. The, the angels of, of the little babies are beholding the face of our God. We've got an unseen army. We don't have to be alone or feel alone unless we choose to. Aren't we glad now that we have, are born again, we have a choice? We have a choice to be sad, or we have a choice to look to Jesus and be filled with his spirit and be glad. Thank God for the choice that he gives to us. And so it says, so when the Syrians came down to him, remember, the house of the angels with the chariots were around Elisha. And when the Syrians came down to him, Elisha prayed to the Lord and said, Strike this people, I pray, with blindness. And he struck them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. According to the word of Elisha. You know, no sense having the power of God and being a coward. 
We've got all the promises of God. I'm trying to teach you the promises of God. And no sense of having the weapons of power. Weapons can destroy the enemy and keep it in your pocket. Elisha had that power, but he didn't just keep it in his pocket. He looked at them and he said to them, Oh, you've come to get me. You're going to kill me. Don't kill me. Oh, I'm so scared. I'm only one and there's so many of you. No. He looked at them and he prayed to God. I don't know what God you pray to, but if you pray to the Lord Almighty, who reigns forever and ever, he says, strike these people, I pray, with blindness. And he struck them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. Do you know that these accounts are written to be examples to us? It's not just an inspirational story. They're written so we can imitate them. We can say to the enemy, be gone. We can know and pronounce blessings and favor upon ourselves and live in that presence knowing that the holy angels of God are walking beside us. We will never be alone. Is this the city? Follow me, and I will bring you to the man whom you speak. And he led them to Samaria. Can you imagine? The army that had come to destroy him, he had God strike them blind and say, come, come follow me. <laughs> this is not where you want to be. Do you know you can send the enemy somewhere else? I usually, I'm glad we live, you know, in, in a, an island state because they usually send them to the ocean. Because I don't want to send them. No, this is not where you want to be. Just go that way. And so they went that way and standing strong and say, I will not desert my city. I call for the men to stand strong. And men are taking their wives and children to the border and returning and say, we will stay until we fight. And freedom is attained once again. Their countries, they're wa they were waiting to be evacuated to Israel and do their aliyah, which is the call that God put in, in, in their heart to return to the homeland in the last three. And freedom of evacuating some of these right now. They're, they're trying to get buses and trains, whatever's available, to take these people to the neighboring countries and then fly them to Israel. And so far, since 2018, when um, they had a team go there. They have rescued 500 Jewish families, and they have a hope that we're prone to persecution, to be rescued supernaturally. You can just pick them up and transport them. You can hide them. You can provide supernatural transportation. Lord, we are trusting you that as we claim things in the spirit realm, we will have multiple stories of miraculous things of rescue and provision and protection. And we pray and agree in Jesus' name that this war will be stopped soon. In Jesus' name, encourage your children, I pray. Amen. Now, there's a difference for those of us who are Gentiles. For those of us who have lived after Jesus came, and first of all, of reflection. People don't like to reflect anymore because a lot of times it just brings a lot of pain. But when you're in Jesus Christ, we want to reflect not on ourselves and our past or our accomplishments or whatever. We want to reflect on what Jesus did. Because you see, the greatest event in mankind's history is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Can you think of being in this sinful world and seeing all the pain? Know that his suffering will take away pain and was willing to do it. In Isaiah 53, which was maybe about seven, a little over 700 years before of him. And as we face the death of Jesus in the next few weeks. I want you to know what he went through, the shame, the humiliation, the pain. Read this chapter slowly. I want you to mark it. I want you to meditate it on some time. 
between your other readings because this is what Jesus did for us. Isaiah 53. He shall grow up before him as a tender plant, as a root out of dry ground. He has no form or comeliness, and when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before its shears is silent, so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who will declare his generation? For he was cut off from the land of the living, but with the rich at his death. Because he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Him to grief. When you make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the labor of his soul and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant shall justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. And we ask you, Lord, that your words will sink into our hearts and fellowship with you with your sufferings so we might be grateful that for the murder you, we committed, you paid the punishment for it. You died for it. For the things we have stolen, for things we have inflicted on others, for the evil in our hearts, for the gossiping, for the destruction we have brought through our behavior, through our neglect of our family, through the addiction of drugs and alcohol, to the sexual promiscuity and bondage. Lord Jesus, we reflect that when we ask you to forgive us, you took the punishment on the cross and set us free. For these eternal things that you have done for us, May we not feel sorry for ourselves, for our safety, for the beautiful island that we live in, for the love of family. We thank you. We thank you for these blessings that we cannot buy with money. And we thank Jesus. And Lord Jesus, I know that just looking at a cross, those Christians in the Ukraine are clinging to that hope. Rescue them, we pray. Speak to them as you've spoken. Let them know the comfort of your presence, whether they be in a cave or out 
in a stretch of desert land or hiding in the rubble of a building. Let your glory permeate the very atmosphere around them. Let your presence be strong. We thank you, Lord, to come and have that covenant you made with Abraham for the same protection, for the same freedom, for the same blessings that you promised Abraham. We thank you, Lord, where they serve multiple gods. Oh, thank you that we learned there's only one God and he wants to be our father. And tonight, as we close, if there's anybody, an outsider looking in and you're wondering, in times that could be very fearful, except we choose to be in the ark of safety as no one in his family did, come into the presence of God. If you have war in your heart, I want peace to Jesus who can give you miracles for provision for your daily needs. Just say this with me tonight. Dear Jesus, thank you for going to the cross and dying for me. To think that you were rejected for me. You chose not to be attractive in the flesh. You were despised, ridiculed not esteemed as somebody special. And then you went to the cross for all my sins. Thank you. I admit that I'm a sinner. I cannot save myself. Please forgive me of all my sins. And I invite you to come and be the Lord of my life. I want to do my little part now. I want to invite your Holy Spirit to come in. I give my body to be your temple. And I will carry you wherever I go to be light in a time of darkness. Your book of life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit as I surrender to you and allow you to make me a new creature. In Jesus' name, amen. And Father, for everyone who said that prayer, I pray the glory of God has flooded them, that they know by your spirit that they've passed from death into life, that they have victory tonight in Jesus' name, that they no longer they see a host of your angels around them. Thank you for the blessing. Thank you for the comfort. Of there is. Let me tell you what, there is a spirit of discouragement going on, and I rebuke that in Jesus' name. Almost everyone here experienced some kind of discouragement this, today, and God wants you to know that you need to encourage yourself in the Lord. Get in the word. Refuse to be victimized by the heaviness of discouragement. We are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ. If you're discouraged, read Romans chapter 8. If God be for us, who can be against us? The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law, law of sin and death. And nothing can separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. Read it as you go to sleep tonight. Sleep in victory. Have pleasant dreams. It was great being with you. God bless you and keep your eyes on Jesus. We love you and stay in the center of God's will because Jesus is coming very soon. Amen. Love you all. Good night. Mm -hmm.